how does anyone do this fire thing? Do people actually retire in their 30s and 40s? How do I do that if I want to do it? In this video, I am going to answer all of those questions for you. Hi everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome. If you are new here, I am Jolene and I run the blog sunshinediary.com. I also make videos here on YouTube about frugal living, planning and productivity. So if that is the kind of content that you are interested in, I would like to encourage you to click subscribe because I think you are really going to like my videos. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the FIRE movement. If you haven't heard about it before, it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, and it is essentially a movement where young people are seeking to become financially independent, so it means that they are no longer reliant upon regular paid work for their survival. They have their own independent means, and then once they have reached that position, they opt to retire early. Now, I would count early retirement as retirement any time under the age of, let's say, about 55, 60. But for most people in the fire community, this actually means retiring round about the age of 40, between 30 and 40. So you might be wondering, and I did wonder when I found out about this kind of system, how exactly does it work? Is it a real thing? Is it a hoax? Does this, do you have to have a massive income to accomplish this? You might be wondering if it's something that you can do or if it's something that I am doing. So how do people go about accomplishing FIRE? Well, the very first step, I, let me reassure you, is not having a massive income. The first step is figuring out what your yearly living expenses look like. What do you spend each year to live right now? And what do you anticipate that you will spend each year to live once you have retired? That can be affected by many factors. For instance, if you are currently 45 and you know that in the next six years, you will pay off your mortgage on the home where you currently live, well, then your expenses are likely to go down if you plan to retire in five or six years. Or if you currently have a 15 year old and in five years, that child is likely to have moved out of the house, your expenses might go down. They might go up if you expect that you will be paying for tuition at college or university at that time. So these are the factors that you have to bear in mind. But to make things really simple, let's just say you calculate and you look at what you spend currently right now. The next step that people take when they are trying to figure out how to retire early is they calculate what their financial independence number is. It's also known as the FI number. So that is how much do I need to have saved and invested in order to be able to live at my current lifestyle in retirement. Once again, this can be nuanced. You can decide you want to live much more lavishly in retirement or you want to be much more frugal in retirement. That's up to you. I'm trying to just make this simple and palatable for now. And if you have any questions about the nitty gritty of things, feel free to ask me in the comments and I would be happy to answer them. But let's just say that currently you need $30,000 to live every year. Mind you, I said your living expenses not your income, not your salary. How much do you actually spend every year? So you've calculated that. Now we're trying to figure out what our FI number is. And that number really amounts to roughly what you spend each year multiplied by 25. That is the easiest way to calculate it. So if you spend $30,000 in a year, multiply that by 25 and you will have $750,000 is your FI number. Once you have that amount of money in savings and investments, you can retire. And what is that based on? How do you know that, oh my God, I multiply that by 25 and I can retire? Mind you, first of all, I said that that was a simplification of the calculation. There are more complex and more nuanced ways to calculate that. If you like, you can go online. There are sites that will allow you to input things like adjustments for inflation and different things that have to do with your specific lifestyle. I would recommend that you check out maybe millennialmoney.com. There is a fire calculator on there that that might be useful to you but let's just say that we went with the simple calculation how does anybody know that this is the number that I need to have before I can retire I'll deal with that before I talk about how do I actually get to that number because yes I know it is a pretty high number and it can seem intimidating we'll cover that don't worry 
But first of all, how do we know that that is what we're going to need and that will be enough? Well, most of the fire movements calculations were initially based on studies done in the 90s by a financial advisor named William Bengen. And he came up with something that is known as the 4% rule, where he calculated, he had a look at the markets, at currency, at stocks, at people's investments over a long period of time. And he came up with a number of 4%. Now, what that 4% is, is the amount that most retirees can withdraw from their investment portfolio every year in retirement without their portfolio ever reaching zero. So they would have money forever based on how the markets had performed over a long period of time. He came to the conclusion that once you retired, if you took 4% out of your portfolio, if your portfolio was big enough and you took only 4% out each year, you would have money indefinitely. Now today, many people dispute that. Many people say, well, actually he was being very conservative. A lot of other people would argue that he was being a little bit too ambitious and that 4% is a little bit too much, especially if you are thinking of retiring young at 30 or 40, your retirement, your period of retirement is going to be so much longer that you need to withdraw only 3% or 3.5%. So I don't want to get into all of that in this video. I just kind of wanted to give you the basic breakdown of it. You calculate, first of all, what you spend in a year. And then after that, you figure out what your FI number is. And then once you've figured that out, you know how much you need. If you want to be able to just withdraw 4% and live on that forever, your next step is to save like crazy. And yes, most of the people in the FI community typically have savings rates that will blow your mind. They are normally saving sometimes 50% of their income, 40% of their income, 70% of their income. And that might seem impossible, but I promise you it is doable if you are determined and if you have this amazing goal in mind of being completely financially independent, not being forced to work, being able to travel, do whatever you want, owning your time again. For a lot of people, it's worth it to, for a five or 10 year period, live on only 50% of their income. If you do the calculation, you'll see that that means that if you are 30 right now and you save and invest at the rate of 50 grand a year, you will reach your FI number, the number at which you can retire by the time you are 45. But I can already hear you saying it. Nonsense, hogwash, malarkey. There is no way that I can save 50 grand a year. I don't even make 50 grand a year. So if that is your case, and I think that's probably the case of many of the people watching Never Fair, let me reassure you. First of all, you probably don't need to save that much. The number that I threw out, the numbers that I'm throwing out are fairly big numbers, especially if you live alone, you are in a single income household, let's say you have no children or anything, chances are your living expenses do not amount to 30 grand a year. If you are not making 50 grand a year, maybe your living expenses, let's say you're making 40 grand a year, maybe your living expenses are actually 25 grand a year. So your FI number will be lower. So you will have to save less every year to get there. But yes, it still is going to be a big number that you have to save, which is why the people in the fire community typically try to have very, very high savings rates. And I'm using the word savings, but I mean savings and investment. Every time I say savings, I mean savings and investment because what is really going to make all of the difference is the second point that I'm going to give you to reassure you, which is the power of compound interest. It's not just about saving a lot, although the FI community, like I said, they try to have massive savings and investments rates. So they try to set aside about 70% of their income every month. But if you do just that alone, without accounting for the fact that your investments will garner interest, then of course it will look like it'll take you forever to reach your FI number, or you will have to save much more to get there if you're not accounting for the fact that your money is actually working for you and growing a little bit on its own. 
And finally, to reassure you about the fact that it's not just about your FI number being maybe lower than what I have postulated here in my examples, and about the fact that your money is going to grow a bit on its own, it's not just about how much you save. The last element that I hope will reassure you a little bit is that chances are, especially if you are in your 30s, early 30s, you are not starting from zero. If you're in your 20s, you've got ample time and your money can work so much harder for you because you've got more time. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, do watch the video that I did on compound interest. That really explains the value of time in the market when it comes to watching your money grow and seeing how your money can grow exponentially over time. But anyway, you probably have something. If you are 30, if you are 32, 33, if you're starting out at around that kind of age, maybe you have already purchased property, maybe you have assets of very high value, some of which you can sell and put that money into investments or something, you can think about things like that. Maybe you own your home or you are on your way to owning your home. Maybe you have significant savings, maybe you have a good size rainy day fund, maybe you have already started investment. Chances are that is the case if you are already in your 30s. You've probably already started, well, I hope you've already started thinking about saving for your retirement and so on. So this is just a matter of adding to what you already have. But it is true, when it comes to saving, putting away money, investing money, letting money grow, and making sacrifices in the name of being able to retire early, there is nothing like the FIRE community for that determination, for finding creative and resourceful ways to keep the budget low so that retirement can just happen a little bit earlier. So I would really recommend that you explore the FIRE community here on YouTube, on the internet. You will find blogs on ways to save money. But by now I'm sure you're wondering, does this really work? Is it a theory? Is it an unrealistic dream? Is it something Jolene has just cooked up in her brain and is trying to sell us some sort of fantasy? No, I promise you this works. And there are so many people who have pursued fire successfully and retired in their 30s and 40s. We have quit our jobs. I'm retiring. You're retiring. Today, okay. at the age of 38, I'm retiring. Part of my motivation is that even before I had ever heard of the fire community, I met someone who was, I think, about 26 at the time. I might have been 24. And he said to me, I'm going to retire at 30. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. And then he did it. And it made me realize that it's possible I am not 30 anymore. But I uh, will answer the other question that I raise that many of you might be wondering, which is, am I still planning to pursue fire? Not being in my 20s, not being able to start off super, super early about it, do I still think that I can get there? And my answer is yes. And that is a big deal for me. It takes a little bit of courage, I'm not going to lie, to admit that here on the internet where so many people can see because it means now I have all of you to hold me accountable to this. But yes, I absolutely 100% am pursuing fire. I estimate that I will reach my FI number by the time I am 45. I think that it will be a little bit difficult because whereas most people pursuing fire are constantly reducing their spending so that they can increase their savings rate and get to their FI number faster. I am right around a 50% savings and investment rate when it comes to my overall income. And I think it will be a struggle for me to increase that because I am planning to make some significant moves in the next few years that might have the impact of slightly increasing my expenses. So my main focus right now is actually to try to get a bigger shovel, as they say. If you imagine shoveling dirt into a hole little by little, of course, the bigger your shovel, the faster it will work. And so when I say get a bigger shovel, I mean get more money, make a bigger income so that I can get to my FI number faster. That's kind of where I will be working. But I also think that there are things that I can cut back. And yes, like I said, I now have all of you to hold me accountable by the time I am 45. I want to be retired. So hopefully you've kind of understood the principle of FIRE, 
how people accomplish it, how I'm planning to go about it, and maybe how you can do it as well. I would like to know, do you think that this is something that you can do? Is this something that you're interested in? Do you think you will be able to be completely radical for a few years, cut your expenses down to nothing so that you can save enough so that you can retire early? Is it even worth it to go through that? Or would you just like prefer to just wait until you're 65 and retire at the same age as everyone else? Let me know in the comments. I'm really keen to see how you guys feel about this and who else might be interested in coming along for this particular journey. Before I wrap up this video, I do want to talk a little bit about what is retirement and nuance that a little bit. Because like I said, I am looking to retire by 45, but it doesn't mean that I don't expect to do anything at all for the rest of my life that engages my mind, that stimulates me, that fulfills me, or that earns money. And I think that that is actually the case for a lot of people in the fire community who have pursued fire successfully and who are now retired. They are retired but they are doing sailing charters for fun or doing videos on YouTube or they are running a blog or they have a small subsistence farm. They are retired but they have an activity that allows them to stay mentally stimulated and that very often supplements their income somehow so that actually although they have reached their FI number it doesn't mean that the only thing that they live off of are their savings and investments. And that's kind of how I plan to do it. 45 is a very young age to just step away from all sort of meaningful activity. And I think that human beings have a natural need to make a contribution to society. That's probably like 50% of the reason I even have a YouTube channel is because I want to learn and share and chat with you all and really build a community that is pushing forward, becoming more productive, more successful, building wealth, building an empire, building legacy. This is what I want to do. So I can't imagine myself suddenly turning 45 and just knitting and playing with my cats for the rest of my life. That's not what I intend to do. So it also helps to think about that when you're calculating your FI number. If you are looking to retire at a particularly young age, 35, 45, even 50, it might be useful for you to not consider your FI number as the figure that you need so that you can live in your exact same lifestyle without ever working at all. But maybe think about it as, you know, what you would need to have if you wanted to live a very similar lifestyle, but with a very low pressure job where you sell your art or something else that fulfills you without you needing it to bring you a significant income. That's something that in some circles they refer to it as barista fire. I could do a whole nother video on that if you want me to let me know. But this video I think is just about long enough already. So we have talked about fire and I would like to continue talking to you about fire in the comments if you would like me to. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It is absolutely free for you and it tells the algorithm that my video is useful and it promotes it. So I promise you it helps a lot. In any event, I would like to thank you for having watched this video and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye.